2023 has been described as an interesting year in terms of raising the required revenue, trying to close an IMF deal, and also managing the expenditure, as well as turning around the economy. But in all these things, how can we raise the required taxes to meet government's operations and expenditure? Well, there is no better person to engage than the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Reverend Amisha Dawosuamua, as we look at hitting the tax target for this year after some interesting and exciting numbers for 2022. Well, on PM Express Business Edition today, we're looking at revenue mobilization for this year. Can the Ghana Revenue Authority hit its 2023 target for this year? Or there are still some challenges. What about some who say that maybe the targets are too low? And that is why they are always hitting the target. Reverend Dr. Amishada Wosomwa. How are you doing, by the way? Uh, good uh, evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm doing very well by his grace. Mm -hmm. uh, and how are, you, how are you doing, too? Not bad. The grace is quite sufficient. Uh, <laughs> yes, Reverend. yes, definitely. I mean, last year, let, let's start first with last year, the numbers. And people thought that because of all the challenges that we were going through, they were not expecting those good numbers. For you, what were the main rational or reasons behind these numbers that you posted for last year? Uh, thank you very much. I think that there are a number of factors that I will want to attribute the success of uh, 2022 to. Number one, I think that I want to appreciate our customers, for that matter, our taxpayers. Mm. I always prefer to call them our customers. Mm. And um, there were a number of uh, more compliant taxpayers, a uh, number of people who responded to our call where necessary. The various initiatives, even though some of them were criticized here and there, there were also a number of them that uh, um, accommodated them very well. Mm. So that is uh, the starting point. And I also want to also acknowledge the work of the staff. I think that there were a lot of dedication, commitment, uh, um, the enthusiasm to get the work done. I won't say that everybody is on board, anybody is doing the right thing, but I want to say that generally the response from my staff has been quite good. Mm. And then if you want to go into specifics, mm. I think there are a number of initiatives that we put uh, across. Um, number one, we, we all saw the increase in the, um, in the invigilation that is for the VAT. Yeah where the number of people were wondering whether that was the best approach. Yeah. But I've said in, in, in some occasion, or I mean, in the time I've had opportunity, that we are combining moving into technology, as well as whilst we are working on the technology, mm. we are also trying to look at the manual way of monitoring. Mm. And I think that it helped significantly mm. because in the last three months of 2022, we saw the uh, VAT, that's the evaluated tax, compared to 2021, the same period, increasing by over 60%. Mm. And so we saw that the last quarter... So oh, so do you want to link that directly to the on-ground provision and tighten the screws has been one of the reasons for that uh, significant Not jump? only the on-ground, but the combination. For example, the, just the announcement of we even doing the electronic VAT where we're connecting our system to the system of the uh, taxpayers. Mm. That alone saw some sort of increase in the uh, sales turnover mm -hmm. that are reflected in what people filed uh, compared to the mm. previous year. Mm. Uh, so in addition to that, then as I had mentioned previously, if you look at the vigilation that we did from uh, um, October, November, December, and if you compare it to the, what was, were, I mean, people were filing mm. previously, you see significantly that there were increases more over a thousand percent in some cases, hundred percent in some cases, two hundred percent in some cases between the sales turnover that they were reflecting in their uh, filings compared to what was coming through from mm -hmm. the inflation. Mm -hmm. So the inflation worked. There was also the um, uh, test purchases. Mm -hmm. Test purchases where we're sending people to some of these. Um, shops and restaurants and things and then where they will buy mm. and then when they will buy if they receive a fake um, mm. invoice mm. we go back to them mm. if they don't receive an invoice even though they um, if they don't receive a vat invoice even though the uh, taxpayer or the, um, the agent or the, ta the retail shop is registered for tax mm. uh, vat mm. then we also go back there mm. this also resulted in a number of arrests if you remember mm. last year mm. Mm. and people becoming conscious that 
the next customer that might enter your shop might not be an ordinary customer, mm. but might be uh, a, mm. a mystery shopper. Yeah. Also makes, brought in the consciousness that we saw the increase in the volume of people mm. who were being compliant as far mm. as the VAT is concerned. Mm. So you see that VAT contribution, um, which was around 18% uh, percent by the end of the year, to, I mean, when I say contribution, contribution to a total tax collector, tax yeah. uh, had moved on to about 20%, percent That's at the mm. end of 2022. Mm. Our target is to move it further to about 30%, which is what we see mm -hmm. in the Africa average. Mm -hmm. So that's also another area. Mm -hmm. There was also a lot more on transfer pricing. Mm -hmm. We did a bit more effective in terms of looking at some of the multinationals and some other companies as far as transfer pricing mechanisms are concerned. Mm -hmm. And we saw a bit of increase in revenue. There are also certain sectors that also did um, well. Um, there was some improvement in the revenue from the banking sector, I know it's another thing that we have to discuss yeah, when yeah, it comes to yeah, the yeah, yeah, uh, debt yeah, exchange and things yeah. like that. But at least we also saw some improvement in those areas. And then also we saw um, significant um, revenues also from uh, other parts in terms of the corporate income tax mm. and things like that. Mm. And there were a number of electronic initiatives that we also introduced. Yeah. We also introduced the um, electronic tax clearance certificate, if you are aware, which for the first time allowed people to sit in their homes and then be able to uh, generate their own task grant certificates online without having to walk into our offices. Mm. And the system is such that the checks are all done automatically. And so this perception of you going to the office Working. when you are not uh, compliant and trying to mm. Uh, mm. bribe your way through or something was not working because you have to sit on the system if the system will do the compliance, if you are compliant, you get your tax grant certificate. You, 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 yeah, you talked about somebody walking in and you don't know whether that person is a mystery shopper and all the rest. And I've seen that even for these uh, small shops, they have adverts on their glass doors talking about insisting on your VAT invoice and all the rest. And that kind of awareness and consciousness. But let me also get from you. I mean, how has, with all these things, how has technology played part in improving and collecting because you talked about some of these systems that were put in place and all the rest. How have they contributed to helping with the mobilization of taxes or collections as well? I think technology has played uh, um, a significant role and I will not underplay it at all. And I think that going forward we will continue to emphasize mm -hmm. on technology. Can be heavy on that? I, yes, definitely. B because um, if you look at in the past couple of I mean, years, we started with the uh, uh, cashless, which mm. actually meant that we had to take off out of our offices over 257 tellers. And you know when the people are collecting cash, I mean, recently you heard this story about some issues with uh, um, lands um, commissioning and some uh, yeah. ta uh, tax stamp uh, issues. Yeah. Yes. And definitely when you have people that are not the banking environment um, doing uh, handling cash compared to where uh, we have a good environment in there. So today, we don't collect cash at all in I our mean, offices. I mean, on the lands issue, you might be worried because it has to do with tax issues and collections. Th that's what I'm work. saying. So I'm just pointing out to you how important the, uh, um, what do you call it, the technology is. Mm. Uh, so the first step we did was to, to do what was in our offices and to ensure that in our offices, we don't collect um, cash at all. Mm. And not only that that ensures that there's efficiency and monitoring also we had issues of uh, return checks people come to our offices they pay in checks you've signed in as they have paid their tax you present the check three days after it's uh, returned mm. now you have to now have to go and look for the taxpayer all these things have been killed if i mean want to say so i mean have been resolved resolved yeah and and for the past years if you look at auditor general's report on taxes Every report up to 2020 will have an issue about return checks. Mm -hmm. But from 2021, you will not have it again. Mm -hmm. And again, if their checks are returned, it means that revenues are not collected. Yeah, state, yeah. So I think the technology has. And then the number two, the filing. Today, people can also file online. Tax paying is not easy. So if you make the tax paying convenient for the taxpayer, it makes it a bit more easier for the taxpayer to also pay. And then in terms of compliance, mm. uh, I always use the example 
of the uh, vehicles I see um, driving in the street where they've written at the back uh, in case of speeding. Yeah, call this number. Call this number. And I'm wondering how many of these are effective because the vehicles was by speeding and says speed limit 80 kilometers per hour. The vehicle is going, very good going above 80 mm. kilometers per hour. How will you be able to notify, uh, uh, notice the uh, telephone number written at the back of the yeah. vehicle yeah. and to be able to call whoever you're supposed to call? Mm. But I've seen one organization that I travel with them. And the people in this organization will not even do 81 kilometers, no matter what. And I asked them, why will not do that? He says, as soon as I go beyond 80 kilometers, I'll get an alert on my phone. I'll get an alert that my salary has been deducted. Wow. And so because the technology works, and as soon as he goes 81, he gets an alert mm. that he has breached the organization. They obey it. So using technology for compliance is very, very okay. important for tax matters rather than trying to depend upon the manual compliance. Let's look at the tax target. And then you, you read several reports that raises issues about the, our tax GDP ratio, even our peers in the region and all the rest. And, and some are saying that maybe the authority, the GRA, hasn't stretched itself that much in terms of bringing in more persons that are supposed to meet these taxes or supposed to pay taxes to the state. That's why we always celebrate these tax targets being achieved because some are saying that if you look at the economic activities happening in this country, what we are collecting is still not enough. Uh, I would agree with you that we need to definitely collect more. I also agree with you that if you look at the tax to the GDP ratio, the Africa average uh, as at the end of 20. Uh, 21 was 14 um, percent that was the Africa average but you will see that um, in terms of the growth in our uh, tax to GDP ratio in terms of the growth in year-on-year -year growth mm -hmm. in our revenues there have been significant growth uh, if you look at 2021 compared to 2020 we saw a 26.5 increase I mean I'm talking about growth mm. in tax revenue um, which was the highest in the last 10 years in terms of the year-on-year -year growth. Between 2021 and 2022, the tax to revenue growth also was 31%, so which is also higher than the 26.5% um, that we achieved in 2021 over 2020. The target for 2023 is also a 40% year-on-year -year growth. So you see that significant is not just growth, but the, the, we are increasing at an increasing rate. In mm. other words, mm. there's growth, but the percentage of growth is higher than the previous mm. year. Um, if you take the tax to GDP ratio, in 2020, 2020 we are at 12.8%. In 2021, we moved to 13.1%. In 2022, we moved to 13.7%. So we are seeing that there's consistent growth in the tax to GDP ratio. Mm. Now, you ask a very valid question in terms of the tax to GDP ratio. In looking at the 2023 target, we looked at the tax to GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. And we said, um, one of the things that the government looked at was the fact that the average was 14. Yeah. So let's aim that we will be above the average to start with. Yeah. And that is why the target for 2023 is the 14.6%. Mm. So we know that we will be above that. But overall, mm. Our medium target is to be get to the 18.5 uh, mm, percent, or, uh, or even 20 percent. Say. But that is where, where we are. In, in terms of the nominal numbers, I mean, how much? How, what is the target that government has given to you? Okay, so um, last year, as you are aware, we let me comment a little bit about the last year, yeah, and I'll come yeah, to this yeah, year. Yeah. Last year, as you are aware, the original target was 80.03 yeah. billion, 80 billion. And then included in that was the e levy of about seven billion. Mm. And then in the mid year, because of the challenges of the e levy, you know that this was revised to seventy one point nine, roughly about seventy two billion, basically trying to take out the e levy component. Mm. But then we had to look at what other measures can we make sure that we'll be able to close the gap. Mm. And so we didn't rest on the seventy two billion as a target, mm. and therefore we aimed at going beyond it. And we ended the year with 75.7 billion, mm. 
which is almost like 2.6 or 2.7 billion above the um, target. Mm. Now, and I told you that that increase compared to uh, what we did in 57 that we did in 2021, it constituted a 31.5% year-on-year growth. So for 2023, the target is 106 billion. Mm. So for the first time in Ghana, we are crossing the 100 billion uh, mark. And the year-on-year growth is 40%. And this, we believe, is quite significant. But I think that we have the capacity and the ability to do our best to mobilize this um, uh, revenue. And I'm confident that we should be able to exceed the target. Um, as at the end of February, uh, the total that we have collected was 13.3 billion mm. compared to the target of 12.6 billion. So we have about 500 uh, I mean, million Ghana cities above the target for the first two months of the year. And the, we believe that a number of the initiatives that we are working on is continue to um, uh, uh, help us. So if you look at the year-on-year -year increase for the two months, mm. it's 52% year-on-year increase. Mm. And I mentioned to you that the target for this year is 40% year-on-year increase. So if in the first two months we are able to do 52% year-on-year compared to, in other words, we are looking at January, February 2023, compared to January, February 2022, mm -hmm. the increase that has been, uh, we have achieved so far is 52%. Mm. And therefore, we are confident that if we can maintain the same momentum, then we can end the year, uh, is early days yet anyway, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there are a number of factors that we know can come through. Mm -hmm. But I'm confident that, uh, now to me, let me just answer your question about, yeah. are they too low? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely, if you look at the kind of increase, stretch that yourself more than what you've been, you've been yeah, stretching. Yeah. Um, but there are a number of uh, um, structural changes that we have to continue doing. And if we're able to put all the structural changes that we have initiated through, then we know that we'll be able to get to the 25%, um, the 20%, the 20 or the 18%. That's the GDP ratios that we are all looking for. I mean, in your submission, Ella, you spoke about ELEV. You're not getting into specifics. I mean, and you even recently got the announcement notifying the public about the fact that this is now the new percentage that is being collected. How is it doing in terms of collections? Yeah, I think that is doing quite well. Um, I, if you recall, the, what the minister presented to um, parliament yeah. was uh, a reduction in the ELEV percentage from one5 to one percent, and then the removal of the threshold of hundred cities. So then the expectation was that you are going to remove the, I mean, bring more people in, yeah, yeah. and then also reduce the rate. Um, what was approved was for the reduction from the one point five to one percent, yeah. but the removal of the threshold was not approved by um, Parliament, mm. and therefore it meant that what we have done is basically reducing the uh, rate. Um, in, in December of 2022, mm. the total ELEV that was collected was 103 uh, million cities for the month only. Yeah. And in January, what was collected was 87 million um, cities. Now, if you look mathematically at a reduction of from 1.5 to 1, that is like a 50% reduction. So if you are looking at it, um, all things being equal, then you will expect that from 100 million, we should go to, let's say, um, say 75. Mm. Do you understand me? If I'm working the mathematics. Yeah, yeah. But then we ended January at 87, which shows that even though there's a bit of reduction as a result of the um, uh, change in the applicable rates, mm. there is also some sort of increase in the usage yeah. and therefore yeah. matching up for the yeah. reduction. Because, because some of us, there's a school of thought even in tax, and you might educate me as we try to uh, take a short break on that one, that when the rates are low, there's a correspondent less than between contributions, and that is cut across all the tax type that in some countries, because the rates are low, there's more mobilization than when it's high, there's a tendency of discouraging people from paying. 
Yeah, so it all depends on the elasticity of, of the, mm. the particular task type mm. to the mm. increase mm. or the mm. decrease. Mm. Mm. And therefore, any time we are looking at these increases, our research units and for them also the task policy unit do, do mm. steady mm. the elasticity of that mm. particular task type to increase or decreases. So if you don't study those things and you just increase or decrease a uh, task, you might not get the mm. corresponding And your research effect. department is doing that, Reverend? Yes, you are doing that in conjunction with... all with the, the tax types? Yeah, they do study all the tax okay. types regularly. They do a lot of research um, together with the tax policy uh, unit. Of finance, yeah. Yes, of future finance. And there are a number of such studies they have done, not only on the elasticity, but on many other areas. I mean, for example, this of our reintroduction of the vehicle income tax, yeah. the reintroduction of the tax stamp in terms of the um, small, small um, tabletop and mm. all that. Uh, mm. So all these are things that mm. they, are, they do study mm. on mm. and advise. Now that we have a fair idea about how we collected these monies and even what we are projecting for this year, I'll be coming back to the approach of collecting these taxes. This is PM my experience business edition to look at the 2023 revenue mobilization. Can the Ghana Revenue Authority hit this tax target for this year with respect to all the challenges that the economy is going through? We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome to PM Express Business Edition as you look at the 2023 revenue uh, targets and the role the Ghana Revenue is playing in all these things. Some have also raised questions about its strategy. Has it been business friendly? And how will these tax measures that have been announced in the budget impact on this target? Reverend Dr. Amisha Dawosomwa is the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority. And let me just backtrack a little bit because when I go through the 2023 budget, there are some tax measures in there. Some have been passed, I stand to be corrected, some are still yet to be worked on. How has that these measures in the budget? going to impact on what you are supposed to collect for this year? Yeah, thank you very much. I think there were a number of measures that were, had been outlined mm. for the achievement of the budget for 2023. Mm. And like you rightly said, yes, some of them have been passed. Like, do you know, the uh, VAT 2.5% has been passed. The, um, uh, we just talked about the uh, E-Levy has been passed. By a number of them, on the income tax rate and other things, which has not been um, passed mm. yet. I know that the recently the Minister of Finance um, did uh, retreat the mm. importance for the Parliament to pass these um, uh, laws early. Because, as you rightly pointed out, if it delays, then as the months go by, you lose the revenue proportionate for the period. So, for example, we have already done two months and we are in the third month. Mm. So, it means that definitely for the first quarter, whatever we had forecasted for that will not happen. Mm. Uh, but I always be quick to add that as an authority, we you don't sit down and fold our arms and say, um, if it's not passed, then we're just going to say we are going to reduce. We always want to see the monitor regularly what is happening and see whether there are any other areas by which we can close the possible gap that arises as a result of some of these delays. But it's important that they are passed on time. Help me out. What does the law say and what is the right thing to do? Any time that the law is passed by parliament and gets presidential accent and all there is, what are the processes to start the collection? Because there are some businesses who complained about the fact that, you know, that, that lacuna and all the rest, and they get confused and GRA comes and they want to backtrack. And it's a, it's a whole issue back and forth. I mean, just, just help me out. What is the convention that I can say that? getting the approval and when GR is supposed to go to these businesses to account for these taxes? Yeah, uh, I think once the law is passed and the assent is given, it's expected that the law should come into effect immediately. But sometimes there are certain few um, administrative issues that might come up. Yeah. Um, for example, if you take the, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the E-Levy, yeah. uh, when it was reduced to 1.5, yeah. You have to go to the telecos, they have to uh, readjust their system, yeah. and then they will say, okay, give me two days, give me three days for how to adjust myself. I know when it's down, <laughs> the 
they definitely will work faster yeah. than if it was going Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> up. Uh, but you can understand. So there are some of these things. But what you normally do is that whilst we are waiting for the bill to be passed, we will do the, uh, um, uh, the administrative guidelines. Okay. We will get the team together. They will write them all out, prepare everything, and then they will start debate, discussing it. You cannot share it because you don't know what changes might come in the actual passing of the law. Mm. So you will prepare it as per what you have presented to Parliament. Mm. But you cannot uh, go ahead and say, this is what is going to happen because Parliament is going to pass it. No. Mm. So you hold it. Once Parliament passes it, if there are changes, you go back and review the guidelines. Then you send the guidelines out. So basically, it's only the administrative processes that sort of sometimes will hinder you to be able to go the effective implementation. But otherwise, the aim is that once the assent is given, you have to go I ask this question because there are some businesses who have argued that there is always uh, some uh, gray area in terms of when these things actually take off and when GRA comes to them. So for instance, you're looking at maybe a quarter and then they are saying that, okay, this thing started maybe half of the month and they are working with that. And sometimes the officials come and they want to backdate it and it becomes a whole issue back and forth and all the rest with the authority. I think as much as possible, we try to not to backdate especially if the, the effect, I mean, the law has just been passed. Because as you know, I mean, laws are not supposed to take introspective yeah. uh, yeah. effects. Uh, and then in terms of that implementation, we, like I've told you already, we have to look at the, the administrative procedures. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, when a law is passed and the assent is given, we are supposed to implement immediately. And we try to do that as much as possible. Help me out on, on, the, on the laws again and some education here. The rationale sometimes behind the authorities mandating, uh, forecasting or estimating that Georgia Fee and Co. makes about 200 billion Ghana cities every year. And based on that estimate, I'm going to charge you X amount of taxes. When reality in quarter one, I know that this year, maybe things will not be that good. This whole idea or, or reason behind these projections and doing these tax assessments to these companies. Yeah, I, I think that's for, I mean, in every... Just to get the reasons. I mean, we'll get to the specifics later, but just to get the reason behind yeah, it. Yeah, there are a number of factors you have to take into in, yeah. in, in place. Generally, in terms of the budgeting, we have to look at the economic situation and the general situation for each particular sector and see what the implications are. Sometimes there are things that have happened. I remember when the um, uh, COVID-19 time, yeah. when people felt like every sector is going down, we had to sit down and realize that, oh, there are certain sectors that are going that to benefit well. yeah. from the COVID-19 situation. Therefore, we need to really look at those sectors and readjust. So we have to take various um, factors. Now, when we come to specifics, um, you know, it allows the, allow the, the companies to do their own uh, self-assessment. And then they will advise, and based upon that, they'll be able to pay. And then there is a margin in terms of when you actually do the final one, in terms of the difference and see what percentage or differences are allowable. Mm. Uh, and if there are um, specific challenges that we are all aware, we have to discuss it and see what the implications are. I know, for example, the bankers have already started uh, raising concerns. We'll come back to the issues <laughs> of these. Let, let so, me, so yeah. there are all those factors that we take into consideration. But as I always say, um, as a tax authority, we we'll, we'll also want to engage. Mm. So we see that sometimes we engage the um, stakeholders yeah. in the industry yeah. and to be able to discuss before finally the implementation side. Property rate, has it taken off? A property rate, in terms of, when I say has it taken off, in terms of the takeover yeah, or GRA, the yes, sorry, yeah. yes, in terms of all the works that needs to be done have been done, and we are expecting that the full. In fact, we started some announcement in the uh, yeah. papers. Um, we are expecting that the full takeover will be from the end of this month. Um, I mean, imp this month going the full yeah. implementation. So basically, what we have done is that there are a number of um, f uh, uh, properties that we have already raised mm. the assessment. We have introduced a common platform that is a system that allows you to be able to populate all the properties in there. And then we are encouraging uh, property owners to go online and be able to update their records with any additional properties that they have. And then within that system, we are able to generate your um, uh, rates applicable to your property. You know, the rates differ from um, uh, 
area to area and you know, to municipality to municipality. And then we'll be able to advise the, um, uh, the property owners of the areas. At the same time, we're also encouraging, once this, um, with the platform ready, we are encouraging property owners to also go in. And if even your rates, your, your applicable rate has not been generated yet, mm. you can still even pay uh, in advance if you so desire. And then when the rates are distributed, you'll be able to get the right figure for your property rate. So end of March is effective um, uh, date that we are before the end of March. And then we are expecting that everybody will be on board mm. and it will be for the whole year. So we are expecting that any payments that anybody will have to do on property rate this year must be done on the platform. Interesting. And I don't know what your research department is telling you. I mean, you're encouraging people to go online. People just don't want to pay taxes. And so some are saying that the bit where you are encouraging people to assess themselves or go online, I don't know how easy it had been for you over the years, apart from the corporates. If you have a lot of individuals who want about maybe 10 houses at East Ligon, five houses at airport, and these are commercial houses that they are renting it out and all the rest. Would they, do you think that they would go online to, to update their, their, their record? I think that in taxation, we always have voluntary compliance and then you come to the enforcement. Mm. And it's always important that, like you, you always say, that are we not being too uh, excessive? I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be coming to that one. <laughs> so you just go ahead. And okay. So, <laughs> so you don't have to assume everybody as uh, a defaulter, mm. but start with the voluntary compliance. Go with a clean mind. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then, so what we have decided is, I mean, as per the law, there will be a 48 days within which we expect uh, people to be compliant. And if they are not compliant, then we will start now doing looking at the enforcement measures. Mm. And so there will be a lot of advertisements that we have st started. I'm sure this week you'll be seeing some of the adverts in the papers uh, that will encourage voluntary compliance. And it, it's the same thing. In fact, I will show you some as we go ahead some other areas that we are encouraging voluntary compliance. And then after that, we'll come out with the other compliance measures. Let's come to your strategy. In collecting these taxes and I remember the other time when I went to a shop at East Ligon and I saw your tax officials all over some of them standing behind the, the counters and all the rest some businesses who are saying that dog reverend we are tax compliant you've never defaulted your men are all over our offices that is harassment we cannot even work some have raised questions about your approach in collecting these taxes what do you tell these businesses uh, l let me just quickly mention, maybe in terms of uh, this year, yeah. some of the strategies. And it will include some of these measures. And I will explain why these measures are I important. Mm. Uh, I've mentioned earlier on that we we'll use technology as much as possible. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, we encourage voluntary um, compliance. But it's important that we also have to monitor and ensure that there is compliance. Um, our measures that we are introducing are also going with other measures to make us as friendly as possible. Mm. You will notice that for the first time in this country, we have a dedicated unit for customer experience. And we are actually leading mm. in talking about customer experience Whoa. in January. I haven't heard well, about it. Uh, oh, actually, you even gave us a... <laughs> <laughs> in your recent customer I mean, experience... I, 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 I know, but I'm just saying that... <laughs> I don't know how these businesses out there, and, and sorry, you're making a very valid point, but how these businesses out there have come to appreciate this customer experience DEX or department okay. to engage with all their content. So we have the uh, customer um, experience, but if you want to reach us, we will do the customer.experience mm. at genre.com. You will be able to send an email for mm. any complaint that you have. We also have two free numbers that are also available that you can also make it available to uh i mean so we have been advertising the two free numbers mm. that you can reach out for any complaint that you have and we actually monitor the number of complaints that we receive um how quickly they resolve and we actually uh, segregate them into how many of the complaints are coming from social media how many are coming from calls how many are coming from uh, test messages and then we analyze what their issues are and we come out with solutions so there's a focus on customer experience 
as far as making sure that the um, uh, customer is giving the necessary attention. Now, when it comes to the strategy for collecting the taxes, as I said, you have got to combine these uh, uh, mm. approaches. We all talk about carrot and stick approach. Yeah. We cannot focus on carrots only. Mm -hmm. We'll focus on carrots, but we also have to do, mm -hmm. yeah. So now coming to the example that you cited in terms of the um, invigilation, and you mentioned about, and as I have said in the past, if you look at the figures that came out, out of the invigilation, clearly there are some that you will see no differences in terms of what came out, I mean, in terms of monitoring and being and be in the shop. There are others that you found that there were significant differences. And the way we do it is that such that the invigilator who sits in the shop actually sits at the end of the exit, mm -hmm. when you are exiting the, the shop. And then he just checks to see whether you got the right mm -hmm. invoice or not. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's no uh, direct interruption, no direct uh, confrontation mm -hmm. with the taxpayer or, for that matter, the um, client who entered the shop. Mm -hmm. And then, this is manual. But our strategy is that you know that we started with a, a pilot of 50 taxpayers. Yeah. That's the registered, um, what do you call them, uh, VAT uh, taxpayers. We've just finished up. We are currently evaluating mm. and looking at the gaps. And we are finishing the evaluation before the end of March. And then we are bringing on board all the 600 uh, large taxpayers who are VAT registered by the end of June. And then we have another medium taxpayers of a thousand that we are aiming to bring them on board by the end of December. Mm. So by the end of December, we'll have 1,600 uh, taxpayers who will be on the online platform for the VAT. And this 1,600 gives us about 90% of the revenue of the of VAT. Mm. As against the, we have about 45,000 registered mm -hmm. uh, VAT taxpayers. And I'm saying that about 1,500 of them, 1,000 of them gives us about uh, 80 to 90 percent of the revenue, mm -hmm. which is basically in line with the 80 20 rule. Mm -hmm. And we are getting all these thousands before the end of 2023 online, where they'll be connecting their uh, invoicing system directly to ours. And therefore, the need for to have the people stationed in the uh, of, uh, shops mm -hmm. will be reduced mm -hmm. and then we'll have more compliance by technology. I, I get from you explaining to me about the recent enforcement and how that impacted on the numbers. Is it more of you thinking that the end justifying the means despite the concerns about the approach? No, I don't think so. It's important that you do a combination of the two. That is ensuring that you are customer friendly Mm. As far as ensuring that, as I said, the cars, mm. cars and the approach. Mm. And I've explained to you that where we want to go is using the technology. And that's why we are encouraging them to mm. hook on to our system. I've made the uh, API, the application programming interface, available to them for the 50. We are going to go to the 600, they are going to go to the 1,000. Mm. And so we will reduce the number of... Um, people who will be in the shops to monitor. Mm. But in monitoring, if, as we have said, we have their customer complaint desk and a customer complaint number. If there's any reason to worry, we encourage the taxpayers to report mm. and we will respond to them. Commissioner actions. General, those who have made these complaints are not persons we all know that they are not paying taxes. These are some of your your faithful uh, clients, your most compliant clients. And recently, uh, the, the chamber, uh, some business chambers, you know, the Ghana, U.S. Chamber of Commerce and all the rest, they all generally issue the statement saying that we are not happy with this approach. That should be worrying. If these were companies who were not honoring their taxes, everybody would say you're doing your work. But these are your faithful clients, as you choose to call them. Uh, it is important for you to know, as I had mentioned, we've, we, we do have several meetings with these uh, um, associations. Um, we've had meetings with the 
American Chamber of Commerce, yeah. the UK Chamber of Commerce, we have met them a number of times. We have discussed with them. We've listened to their concerns. I've had meetings with um, even the ambassadors of various countries and share with them what we are doing. We have listened to their complaints and addressed them. And so generally, there's a constant dialogue between mm -hmm. us and our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. But it's important to notice that in terms of compliance, you have got to do a combination of the approach where you are as friendly as possible at the same time to ensure that those who are not. And it is always, for example, if you go through your system, you'll be able to you'll do what you call risk analysis. Mm. And when it comes to specific taxpayers, it's based upon the risk analysis that we do, that we target specific taxpayers because based on the risk analysis. But when it's a, a broader uh, strategy that tackles everyone, we make sure that that broader strategy it's not a strategy that will ensure, make a taxpayer very uncomfortable. I know some will say it might be a policy issue, but what has been the, the plan at the GRA's end in terms of expanding the tax net and then also bringing the informal sector? Because the complaint from some of these people is like, we are the same people who are always paying the taxes. We know companies here in Ghana that are not paying the taxes, but they are going scot-free. Okay, there are a number of measures that we have put in place for this year to ensure that the uh, 106 billion target is uh, attained. Mm -hmm. um, these measures um, include, uh, I mean, to ensure that there is deepening as well as there is the uh, uh, widening of the nets. When I say deepening, I'm referring to those who are paying. Mm -hmm. They are still, even though they are paying, there are opportunities and room that we see that they can even pay more. Mm -hmm. And therefore, those who need to pay more, um, it's like the story of the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the widow's might. Yeah. <laughs> um, he said some, some had put in very huge amounts. Yeah. The widow put in a very little amount, but then Jesus has said that that widow had paid in more than all those other ones who paid, mm -hmm. put in the big amount. Mm -hmm. Because that supposedly big amount in relation to their tax that they should they could pay is not big at all yeah. and so let's understand that that the fact that um, there are some who are paying and they are paying uh, a billion or 100 billion doesn't mean that that taxpayer for all you know is actually only 10 percent compliant mm -hmm. compared to the one who had paid maybe 10 cities which is 90 percent compliant mm -hmm. so that is there and that, that's why there's a need for us to be able to look at both the deepening and the widening. And when I say the deepening, I give you an example of the uh, VAT. Yeah. That we get, we have 45,000 um, VAT mm. um, registered taxpayers, but we can get 80 to 90 percent of your revenue from 1,005. But that doesn't mean that we will not also concentrate on the remaining 44,000. Mm. We will concentrate on them, we will make sure that we will do activity to expand. So now come to the activity to expand. The 2023, I'll, I'll take it up one by one in terms mm. of the task types. For 2023, I've said that 20,600 VAT will come on board. For 2024, it will become a compliance issue that nobody who is VAT registered sells without connecting to the our system. system. And so we'll be doing away with the, um, the manual, the manual right? The invoices, invoices and all those completely things. Completely in 2024. And therefore, anybody who sells... Must How's the pilots doing? They have, as I said, the pilots are done very well so far. And as I speak, we are evaluating. When I say we are evaluating, we are trying to see what we need to improve and any areas that we think that did well and we need to improve further. Mm. What did not do well, we have to improve further. And we have resources on ground, including some external resources that are helping us to evaluate. When I say external resources, countries that have done it before, mm who have also gone through the, these stages and therefore they are at the ground right as mm. I speak now with us. Mm. And once we finish the evaluation, then we implement the measures that we have seen. Mm. And so 2023, 1,600, 2024, by year end, everybody who sells and is a, a VAT registered must be hooked onto our system. So that's for VAT. When you come to uh, PAYE, there are many of us 
a lot of um, corporate institutions that file PAYE, but they don't file the PAYE with the uh, tin mm. of the taxpayer. And therefore, it's very difficult for you to be able to track the taxpayer. Mm. One of the things that we are doing is making it compulsory to make sure that every filing of um, uh, PAYE mm. is accompanied by the tin. So that, for example, if I ask you where is your tax grant certificate, you will not say, oh, your FM deducts. Okay. As to whatever happens, you, you don't know. Don't know. But if your tin is provided, then we're able to track what you have done. And then if you are doing some consultancy somewhere, we can also start mm. tracking mm. that one okay. as well. Okay. So that's also another thing that we have in place for uh, 2023. Mm. And then also in terms of the various professional bodies, uh, currently we have established our data warehouse. Mm. And the data warehouse is in place where it's linked. The custom system is directly linked to the um, domestic tax system. Mm. And as I speak, we receive data from um, SNIT, we receive data from uh, DVLA, we receive data from um, National Insurance Commission, and all this data is coming into our system. And we have data analytics session, mm. who basically have both do the artificial intelligence as well as normal data analytics. So, for example, they are able to, and every month as I speak today, they are able to work out and then match and see, for example, that you imported things worth a million dollars, mm. yet you pay a tax of domestic side of, say, 2,000 cities. Mm. So then or they should know. Or even in a salary of 1,000 Ghana cities a month. Exactly. So, so something doesn't match. Mm. Let's say, for example, you got from SNIT that uh, your social security is uh, 1,000 cities, yet your tax is, say, uh, 100 cities something doesn't match. So they generate this data on a monthly basis, then they categorize it into the various tax offices and give it to them. Mm. That's how come sometimes you see us approaching that's because we have data. Mm. And number three, we are also, uh, because I'm trying to tackle both the deepening and then the widening. Okay. But number three, we, today, um, GRA has become one of the only five countries in Africa that automatically receives um, data on uh, the activities in terms of financial activities of residents in Ghana in over 100 uh, uh, countries. And this, there are only five. And the reason why we are the only five, among the only five, is that there are a number of systems you have to put in place. Your procedure, your process, your technology must, be, must satisfy the OECD requirements. And the OECD actually comes down to mm. the country and evaluates you. And we have successfully, in 2022, passed and become one of only the five countries in Africa that automatically receive this data. Mm. Now, when you receive this data, it shows your income, any activities outside Ghana. Country. You understand? And therefore, as of today, we are receiving this data. What we are going to do is we are going to do what we call the Voluntary Disclosure Program. So the voluntary disclosure program means that we will let the public know that we are getting data. This, some of these data come from Latin America or European countries, comes from Asia. And so we let the person know that your income earning activities in other countries are being received by What are your Ghana. legal guys telling you in terms of confidentiality and all the rest that the advice they're giving to you? Because, you know, it, it's, it's not been easy even going to individuals who bear assessment they have more properties and what they are not declaring taxable taxes on that. But there are 30 things that you have all these things. What are the legal advisors telling you in terms of the approach? I think that whatever we are doing is in line with the laws. The laws. Yes, not, not only local laws, but the international laws. Okay. And it's not just uh, us, as I've told you. It's in line with the conjunction with the OECD as well as with the African Tax mm. um, Administrative Forum. Mm. And so what we'll do is what we call the VDP, VDP is a voluntary disclosure program. Mm. So if you don't voluntarily come and say, oh, I earn money in uh, Johannesburg or I earn money in uh, Latin sure, America, and, so okay. please add it and let me declare it. Then when the voluntary disclosure program, uh, uh, the, the time we give will um, is a pass, then we will now come to the composite, they will now come and tell you that, oh, uh, we know that this is how much you are actually earning, mm. and therefore it's important. People mm. have asked questions like, uh, but we haven't finished uh, monitoring, but these are all part of the steps that we mm. are taking. Again, in terms of 
I've told you about the data. Mm. I've told you about the international mm. one. I've told you about the VAT one. Mm. So these are all various methods mm. that mm. we are using to be able to expand the TASNET mm. and deepen the TASNET. This is PM Express Business Edition as we look at the 2023 revenue or mobilization target and what role is the Ghana Revenue Authority playing in all these things? And what about the concerns about the approach? Well, he's spoken about it and also we'll be looking at the tax assessment, what goes into it? Why are people crying and making concerns about these things? So take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition. Now, she talk about revenue, 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 and the role of the Ghana Revenue Authority in the economy as well. Reverend, let's come to the Ghana card. How is it doing in terms of its relation to tax collections? Yeah, I think that's also another um, uh, tool for the uh, expansion of the, uh, the, the, the widening of the net. Mm -hmm. I mean, the net. Um, as you are aware, we continually use the data that we receive to see whether the people are already paying the taxes. Mm. We are not paying the taxes. So every month we generate data and then we give it to the uh, office. Mm. So based upon where you are resident, you are located to the particular office. The office then follow up with the individual. So there's a constant matching of the data and following up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's continually increasing the number of taxpayers. Not that I think actually it's increasing the taxpayers. Does it make it more easier? Oh yes, definitely. There's a lot of input that we are getting from um, that angle. And not only that in terms of even bringing more in, it's also helping in terms of the matching mm. of the data. Data. You understand? So when I talked about the uh, getting data from other sources, previously, if you get the data from, let's say, um, another uh, entity, I don't want to mention names, yeah. the uh, identity that they will have used in that particular uh, entity will be different from the identity that you are using. Mm. And therefore, it's very difficult for you to match and say, this judge we are faith who has registered uh, the, the uh, what do you call those cars? Is it, uh, Jaguar. No, Ferrari <laughs> or something. Yeah. Who has registered Ferrari? Yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. At, uh, it's the same judge who is paying a tax of 200 CDs per mm -hmm. month. Do you understand? Salary. Uh -huh. But with the Ghana card, we are no longer just matching the judge We are matching the unique identity, which is the Ghana card. Previously, maybe you have used your passport or you have used your driving licenses. The one you come here is a different ID. Mm. So then matching them becomes difficult. And so there's a lot of uh, 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 input that we are getting from um, the, the Ghana card, both in terms of bringing more people in, in terms of also the data analysis that we are doing. What is the status of the oil marketing companies that are indebted to the state? Uh, as you are aware, there are a number of them that we... Um, are prosecuting. Mm. And the you first started it? Oh, yes, we started it. And significantly, in fact, what we did first was to block the leakage. Mm. And I am happy to say that we have seen a significant reduction in the uh, accumulation of um, deaths. Uh, in, in the previous years, you end up in a year of a death or accumulation of more than 500 uh, million. Mm. But um, in 2022, by the time we ended the year, we had um, less than 20 million as the deaths that has accumulated mm -hmm. compared to the previous ones. Mm -hmm. And this is because today we are ensuring that all the insurance companies whom we, if we allow, you have been properly risk assessed. So there are very few insurance companies that are allowed to guarantee mm. uh, an OMC. Mm. Number two, we have the banks also providing guarantee for OMCs. Number three, we have OMCs that we also evaluate. We actually have to assess you. Mm. And if we assess you and we don't think that you qualify for uh, credit, because when I say credit, it means that you take the oil, yeah, yeah. go and sell. Nice when you and I pay, title, yes, yeah. uh, it's um, um, uh, 20 plus two uh, days, or yes, about 22 days. So if you, if you d not qualify for that, we don't also allow you. You have to do um, what we call cash and carry. In other mm. words, you pay the taxes in advance mm. before you. Uh, so that is stopping the mm. uh, leakage. Mm. And then in terms of the prosecution, um, there are a number of them that have been prosecuted. 
these, some of them, they had offered uh, payment terms. Mm. Um, these payment terms, they had offered before when we were dealing with them, and they had um, failed. But once you go to court, it's a new uh, dispensation, and then the court will still want to offer them a settlement terms. So once the settlement terms, and some of them are paying, mm. if the settlement days pass and you don't pay, then we'll move into either uh, whatever assets that mm. we have laid hands on or whatever uh, um, imprisonment in terms of mm. the criminal mm. aspect mm. of the offense. Mm. So, it, so some are saying that the money is being recovered. Yes, but, yes. But some will say that, why did we get there? Because some are saying that when I look at the amount running to 400 million Ghana cities and all the rest, some are saying that if, the, if GR was going with the rules, why did we allow these companies to abuse the process that long before now you had to zoom on them? I think that there are certain things that if you don't have the robust system in place mm. and the technology that works, uh, it, you create such things. Um, for example, today the technology is such that as soon as your amount that you have to pay is due and you have not paid, you are blocked. Mm. And it's happening right now? Yes, it's happening right now. So you are blocked and you cannot continue to take. Mm -hmm. Number two, we had insurance companies, some of the insurance companies that were... Uh, guaranteeing mm. and you have an insurance company which balance sheet let's say uh, 50 million guaranteeing yeah. uh, a tax liability of say uh, 30 million it, it doesn't work that way so today what we have done is to do risk assessment of insurance companies and therefore there are only eight insurance companies that by their size of their balance sheet we think and even that one too not only have we done the risk assessment but even the insurance company itself that then is assessment of your limits. Mm. So, for example, if you take an insurance company, we can say you can only guarantee up to the maximum of 10 million. Mm. So these are measures that we have put in place. And therefore, in the past, some of these measures were not there. But I think that sometimes, somehow, if you introduce any uh, system, um, you have to continually review and see what measures you can put in place. So technology, process review, and efficiency is ensuring that the losses doesn't okay. Let's come to your assessment, the tax assessment that you're doing for these multinationals and what, what goes into them. Because there have been questions about these assessments that have been done and all the rest. What goes into your assessment that you carry out for most of these multinationals operating in the country? I think that for every tax assessment, it differs from tax type to tax type. Mm. Uh, in some cases, uh, there will be um, particular transactions that the taxpayer would think that this is, does not attract tax, but then maybe it attracts tax and he doesn't know. Uh, in some cases, there will be data that the, uh, uh, the taxpayer has given you and over the years. But then when you go back and you do analysis, you find out that there are gaps in the data mm. that could also lead to, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. And when it comes like that, the assessment will differ. So, for example, if you find out that the revenue that has been reported yeah. was not accurate, there might be a corporate income tax element of it. The same thing, maybe if there are some sort of levies that are applicable, there will be that uh, income, the, that tax aspect of it. If you find out that maybe they are um, uh, withholding tax or VAT that are applicable in what you have identified as gaps, that also. So, it all differs depending upon the review that you are uh, doing. Now, if it all comes to some things like um, transfer pricing, yeah. as well as, as to uh, allowable uh, transactions or deductions, there may be some certain transactions that uh, taxpayer in the past have treated it as uh, funds that can be transferred. Yeah. But when you come to you know this one, basically it constitutes part of your revenue. Mm. And so you have to add it uh, back. And when we do these assessments and we come out with the final assessment, it's important for us to understand that increasingly, GRA, for that matter, government, is giving opportunity for taxpayers to be able to use this. Regress in terms of when they raise questions. Sir. Yes. And you will see that for the first time, Uganda has been able to uh, implement the uh, tax appeals uh, board, mm. which uh, even though it had been passed in 2019, uh, has not been uh, implemented. Mm. And it means that for a first time now, if you appeal 
to the Commissioner General and the Commissioner General gives his ruling as far as your tax assessment is concerned and you are not happy, you don't necessarily need to go to court straight. Mm. You can go to the tax uh, appeals board and then um, raise your objection mm. there. And then they will also go through it and make their decision. Mm. If they make their decision and you are still not happy, then, then you can, can now to proceed to court. But some will see it as, they some still see that as the match commissioner, the referee, no. and even FIFA itself. <laughs> no, not at all. Because the task appeals tribunal, that's why... independent are that's the tribunal? Why it's called independent if they tax. rule, will you comply with their word? Yes. That's why they call it option. independent tax appeals tribunal. Because one, they don't report to January. They report to the Ministry of uh, Finance. Right. They are not set up by us. What we had to do was just to push and say, let's get the thing established so we can get... Because it's also an advantage to us. One is an advantage to us. You know how long the court process yeah. will take. And again, that's number one. Number two, I've told you that we are a tax-friendly organization. Mm. And therefore, instead of we saying going to court, we are pushing to make sure that the uh, independent tax appraisal is there. So we can give the, our taxpayers the opportunity mm. that, oh, you don't need to go to court. If you're not happy with me, go to the tax appraisal. And the chairman, the members are people that are selected from different uh, um, backgrounds and they are not people who are um, from January, mm -hmm. and they are supposed to do their work um, separately. If they rule, and they rule in favor of January, if they rule in favor of the, or against January, and the taxpayer is not happy, nothing stops the taxpayer from proceeding to the court. So that is one of the things that has, we have so ensured. Mm -hmm. Number two, as far as this is concerned, um, if, you, if you notice that recently, there were a lot of court cases against January about the appeals process in terms yeah. of the objection, and then the requirement for you to pay 30%. Um, and let me clarify that. Yeah. It's not necessarily 30%, it says up to 30%. Mm. So the Commission General, in terms of the taxpayer analyzing the situation, can decide whether you can pay 10% or you can pay 15% or you can pay 20% or you can pay the full 30% mm. to allow you to be able to go to the objection mm. um, process. Mm. So this is also there, which is available. In addition, we also have the Tax Audit and Quality Assurance. That's the unit that we have set up that if you also think that the office, that's a, your tax office, yeah. is not treating you fairly, and that the way they are going about it, they are trying to, uh, let me use the word, bully you or yeah. anything like that, you can actually also file a complaint directly to us from the tax audit and quality assurance. They will come and behave as the, uh, the unit that police the policeman. Mm. So they come and check whether the auditor who is auditing you is treating you fairly. So we have these steps that we have put in place that to make sure to, that to has been a fair year. Coming back to the multinationals, and I see the understand of you having a well-grounded assessment and all the rest. So what went? What happened in the MTN case when you came out with your assessment and you had to withdraw it again? Doesn't mean that GI was not doing a good work. I, I think that um, as far as the tax authority is concerned. Is we, we, ha we have to behave professionally. Mm. And by the laws of the country, uh, we cannot take up one-on-one -on -one in terms of specific taxpayers mm. and discuss it mm. in, the, mm. in, in public. Mm. And therefore, I am unable to mm. talk uh, generally specifically mm. about any specific... I, I ask that because these were press, official press statements. Those yes. official statement by MTN as well. And that's why I'm asking that what happened because those official statements by GRE. Uh, no. no okay. um, as far as the taxpayer is concerned, yeah. taxpayer is free to, uh, as far as GRA is concerned, we have that confidentiality clauses that ensures that, and that is so we cannot discuss, but we continually engage our taxpayers, and whatever uh, needs to happen between us and the taxpayer, we engage and discuss and find solutions mm. to the issues. But I want to emphasize that whatever work that we do, we do it as professionally as uh, required, and there are different sides to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, any argument. Mm. Uh, we cannot, as I said, because of the laws of this um, land, come into the public to come and debate any mm. taxpayer mm. as far as our uh, as concerned. Mm. But you stand uh, by the assessment that you did. No, I think that, I mean, that question is not a question that, uh, again, you are drawing me into... The same thing that I'm saying that the laws doesn't allow me to come and discuss 
uh, this individual taxpayer matters mm -hmm. in, in public. Do you mm -hmm. understand me? So as Commissioner General, uh, and that, that even shows how professional we are. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we have not seen us coming to the public and uh, talking on any of those uh, matters. Whatever we need to do, we engage with the taxpayer concern and we discuss matters and we will ensure that the nation and the taxpayer both are uh, eventually um, satisfy the outcomes. As an authority, in terms of the broader approach, and again, not get into specifics, I mean, for you, do you think that it could have been handled better? Because some are saying that, well, if today MT, um, GRA says that this action does it, well, I can also push that. I've also been assessed wrongly or something. No, I, I think that the issue about having been assessed uh, wrongly is not a question of wrongly. Mm. It's a question of objection. Mm. Do you understand me? Ah, so first, you should understand the process. When the taxpayer is evaluate, uh, assessed, he has the reason of opportunity to interact and discuss. We have the opportunity, once the assessment is raised, to be able to object to the assessment. There is a decision that can be made by the Commissioner General as far as assessment is concerned. And then if the taxpayer is not satisfied, he can move on. So there are a lot of uh, interactions that can take place. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, you cannot... Uh, I mean, when you say, for example, somebody says he's wrongly assessed, every taxpayer has a right to come to the Commissioner General and appeal if he thinks that an assessment is not, uh, he hasn't agreed with the assessment. And as I told you, uh, it's, it varies in terms mm -hmm. of people's understanding. Or, and it's like they're going to court. Mm. You have a lawyer who looks at the other person who at from the other point. And therefore, eventually, if we are not happy with the Commissioner General, and as I said, we have the Independent Tax Appeals Tribunal that has been set up. If we are so not happy, we have the courts, and then in the court also we have all the various levels mm. that one can go. But, uh, see, I'm just saying, so today, if the Commissioner or the, the Ghana Revenue Authority does an assessment of me, George Jeff, and I raise serious objections about it, despite your ground that works and all the rest, would that assessment be drawn or be reviewed or something? Oh, if you do your objection procedure and we find out that uh, you have a point, uh, because that's the reason for uh, uh, objection procedure. Mm. Uh, um, let, let's get it very clear as a nation that the reason for objection is for that give the taxpayer to, uh, the chance for him to be able to uh, make his case. If a taxpayer makes his case, and uh, there are a number of um, uh, situations that do where a taxpayer will make his case, you go through the case, if you think that the application of the law was um, not I mean, the way it was applied, there's nothing that I mean, prevents the uh, uh, taxpayer. But let me make it clear that I am not speaking, speaking yeah. in specific reference yeah. to any particular taxpayer. I'm giving you general, the general, issues. Yeah. general yeah. principles underlying the tax process. So George Uafi can appeal on the tax yeah. assessment, the Commissioner, say Commissioner General, internally, we have what we call the, uh, uh, the technical committee, mm. which is made up of various people in various units. They will review your assessment, and then they will advise the Commissioner General, and a decision will be made. If a decision is made, and the decision is made in your favor, uh, the tax is uh, dropped. If the decision is not made in your favor, the assessment is emphasized. And then if you're still not happy, you go to the court. I know you've been doing some work in the extractive space as well. And what is the latest on that one? This is PM Express Business Edition. Take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition. As we talk about revenue and tax collections and what the Ghana Revenue Authority is doing to ensure that we raise the required revenue to match a government expenditure and grow the economy. Reverend, I knew you were doing some work in the extractive space, the assessment, and for the broader extractive space from oil, gold, and all the rest. What is the status of this work that you've been doing? I think this work is um, continuous, I mean, work that we have been doing for the past couple of years. Um, I want to emphasize that um, some of these jobs are not things that started in 2022. There are certain sectors or certain um, views that maybe because the um, government of Ghana, or for that matter, there are challenging times, there are some sort of work that is being done
to be able to extract That's the money. perception out yeah. there that and I want to say that, that, uh, perception, up and that perception there's is, pressure. Is, that perception is, is not, under pressure to go out and raise money? That perception is not correct at all. Um, a lot of the work that we are doing today, some of them started in 2019, some of them started in 2020, some of them started in 2021. So it's a work that has been ongoing um, for some time. And it's not only in the extractive sector, but basically we are looking at our um, even transfer pricing. We are looking at some uh, of the areas that we think that we need to have a second look. And once you go through this, um, uh, what do you call it, as reviews, and you find anything, then you have to now come back and then, uh, and, uh, and then raise your assessment. And therefore, it is important for the whole nation to be assured that there's nothing that is being done as in trying to find money where the GR is no back is against the wall. You know, there's so much pressure uh, you, to go out and find you money. You find government. out that in terms of the targets that we have been giving, we have sufficient strategies to ensure that we get the targets. I have mentioned, and if you realize that um, when we are um, looking at our targets, we are not saying that we are factoring into it individual mm. assessment into the Renata target. George, he's yes, making 300 we, billion Ghana cities. We have to go after him. Yeah, so we are making sure, and that's why I keep emphasizing that we are pro providing avenues for any taxpayer who is not satisfied to make sure that he goes through the process and to ensure that the fair. Uh, some of our values are professionalism, and that is why I told you that some of the things we don't even talk about it. Some of our values are fairness, and then we therefore we are emphasizing the need for opportunity for the taxpayer to receive uh, fair uh, treatment. We are talking about integrity, and we are trying to make sure as much much as possible we are doing that. And then there's a lot of um, teamwork that we. So these values are, are embedded in the way we do our work. And I think that increasingly we are exhibiting these values even better in these times. Despite all the system, the redress, the arbitration, and then the tax at those board, and all the rest and the engagement, uh, some of these players are not satisfied. Talu, for instance, with respect to the assessment, then they're taking it to the international arbitration for hearing on that. Are you worried? Uh, I think, again, as I had mentioned to you, mm. uh, um, uh, I, I still want to be to live by our values. Yeah, not of discussing professionalism. individual tax issues. Uh -huh. So let me be professional. Mm. <laughs> but, but but I'm saying that yeah. I mean not not to. But so, again, are you worried that you have all these mechanisms in place, but some businesses are not satisfied? Even going to the local court here itself raises questions about the appeal process, the systems in place for me to discuss issues with the authority when I have a problem, but how an assessment has been done. Uh, you, you have to distinguish between the um, pro process internally mm. and some of the um, what some uh, taxpayers will interpret to mean what is in their mm. uh, favor. Uh, no, no, what is in their um, bilateral agreements, agreements. Okay. that they have signed with the government. Do you understand me? Mm. And therefore, some of the things that you will see when people are referring to international arbitration and things like that, it depends on their interpretation of the bilateral agreements mm. that they have signed. Do you understand me? And therefore, you should not uh, uh, construe uh, that one in terms of the uh, task dispute process as far as the nation is concerned. Do you think that in terms of this work that you are doing in the entire area, it will bring out the true revenue that these sectors are supposed to contribute to, to the economy? Yeah, yeah d d definitely as we embark on these various measures, and as I mentioned, it's not only in the, uh, I mean, extractive sector is one area that we are looking at. We are also looking at certain other sectors. When I say extractive sector, it's not only multinationals. Yeah. Um, the quarries, and several quarries in Ghana today, they don't pay the right um, taxes. Uh, they are mineral royalties that are applicable to queries that we need to look at it. Uh, so these are all areas that we are looking at. The communication service tax, there are certain areas that in terms of its implementation, we haven't looked at it fully and we need to look at it. So there are areas that we continue to look at. And our aim is one, to ensure that we get the maximum revenue, but at the same time to ensure that we have fairness, professionalism and integrity.
Are you optimistic that with all these measures that you are putting in place, again, we might even overshoot our target for this year? Because I asked this question about what quarter one is doing. And th there's always this, and I stand to be educated, where that Q1s are slow period, or people are trying to put their numbers together, put their books together, reorganize. And even within this period and all the rest and challenges, you've been able to realize these taxes. Does that give you some indication going forward about realizing the target and I getting your men on board with your customers and everything to hit this target for this year? Uh, thank you very much. Um, we are determined um, through our fairness, our professionalism, our integrity um, to be able to, and then the, uh, uh, to, be able to hit the target. As I said, even though first quarters, are, I mean the first quarter is first quarters are usually challenging one. Yeah, we have um, first two months exceeded the target for the first uh, two months mm. by over about five percent, mm. and which is similar to what we did the whole of last year by exceeding the, uh, the the target by about five percent. And so we are encouraged. Um, we will continue to work on that and hope that we can maintain the momentum. We will count on the taxpayers that uh, we will continue to work with them as friendly as possible. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I said we will move the carrots and the stick mm. uh, because it's important that you combine the two. And I mean, from our childhood, everybody knows that uh, you have to combine the carrot and stick. Mm. You don't uh, handle human beings with that. And uh, otherwise, we don't have policemen in on standing on the roads all the time mm -hmm. so that is important and we are confident that there are various areas that we can work together therefore i want to thank the taxpayers who have been paying um uh, voluntarily and being compliant um there are areas that we are working on electronic um uh, commerce and digital uh, mm -hmm. areas um, we have the uh, electronic task that we have talked about all this is increasing the compliance and we are confident that come the end of the year, we will be able to. So, Reverend, wh whilst you, you talk about this carrot and stick issue and the collection of revenue, for those who are honoring their taxes, yes. But some are saying that, well, it appears that you're still coming up to them. Yeah, you see, I think that we need to emphasize the fact that every revenue authority has to, at some point, apply an element of uh, um, uh, the stick or for their constituent ones, yes, but not the um, good ones. Because if, if some those of you or some people who have lived in the US, they will admit that the uh, the IRS will be a, a institution that you don't want to uh, uh, have any chat, trouble with. If you go to the UK, and I mean, uh, I have interacted with the HMRC, the uh, His Majesty's Revenue and Customs, and they had mentioned that. Um, if you uh, uh, default, you know the consequences, and therefore people will not want to default at all. And therefore, it is not different if, as a tax authority, there are elements of trying to enforce the tax, pay, uh, tax payment. So we need to let the public know that if you are compliant voluntarily, we will continue to be friendly with you. If we need to enforce, we will have to enforce. If we need to make sure that uh, um, those who are not in a pain will take the measure to ensure. And therefore, I want to encourage you. It's better to be voluntary compliant. And if you are voluntary compliant, we will not have any problems. With, I mean, there are no, a lot of taxpayers. You will not, even when you go and audit them, you won't find anything. Interesting. Uh, so it is important that they are compliant. Commissioner General has given us a promise that he's going to be business friendly, but still apply the stick and the carrot. Well, it's been PM Express Business Edition. I know the debate will still go on in your homes and offices in terms of what can be done right to achieve the required revenue for this year and what the General Revenue Authority can do and what it can do and how it can be business friendly. I know that's a concern of most enterprises out there. Reverend, I thank you so much for your time. I mean, PM Express. Thank you very much edition. for having me. And then thanks also to your viewers and uh, our customers. Well, do the curtain down. It's PM Express Business Edition. Have a great day.